And for more now on the state of the war in Ukraine, we are joined by CBS News foreign policy and national security contributor, retired Lieutenant General H.R. McNaster, a person you may know as the former national security advisor in the Trump administration. Uh, General, thank you for being here. This is a war that has lasted way longer than a lot of people thought. Who has the upper hand right now? Well, Tony, I don't think anybody has really a clear upper hand, but I think the Ukrainians have time on their side. I think what you've seen with the Russians is they just can't generate the combat power to sustain an offensive. You know, they've lost maybe 2,000 tanks. They've had maybe 200,000 casualties. And even though they've thrown in these new, con you know, these new conscript troops in into the fight, they're not equipped, they're not trained, and they're not having success in, these, in this, this Russian counteroffensive, you know, which there's a big deal made out of yeah. it. But, but it's actually failing. So pe people are thinking the weather's going to warm, and as the temperature goes up, the war is going to change. What are yeah. you expecting from the springtime? Okay, what you're seeing now, you're already seeing the, the, the counteroffensive begin. And, and, uh, and, and this is the, the Russian of renewed offensive, I should say, in, in, the, in the provinces of Donetsk and, and uh, Luhansk. Luhansk is the main effort, mainly around this town of Bakhmut. And what you've seen are these really World War I-style attacks really? to try to turn the Ukrainians uh, out, of, out of their positions. But, you know, even if they get, like, a small local success in Bakhmut, you've got a big ridge line here, and you've got a river. So the, the Ukrainians have established a defense in depth. And, you know, the Russians are running out of material. They're scrambling for ammunition. They were firing 60,000 rounds a day. Again, World War I-like tactics, bombardment and infantry attacks. Yeah. And now they're firing only 20,000 wow. a day. That's a big change. There, there, it's a big change. And there are some supporting attacks going on down here toward, toward the Ukrainians, but the Ukrainians are easily defeating these. So the big question is, you know, it, as, as, as Russia trades thousands uh, of casualties yeah. for hundreds of meters of ground, how long can they sustain that? Yeah, and, and then the, and the question of supplies as well. On that point, actually, let's walk back to the table because something that's front page news as we speak is the question of whether China will start uh, providing lethal aid to Russia in the form of weapons. Uh, that's the reporting, at least, uh, from our intelligence community is allegedly finding that. Uh, what, what do you know? Uh, what do you make of those developments? And, and Putin said that they are reaching new milestones um, with, with the China diplomat that is there. Absolutely, with Wang Yi visiting uh, vi visiting Putin and providing, you know, his pledge for continued support. I think the important point is China is already supporting Russia's war-making machine. They're buying 60 percent more oil from Russia than they were before the renewed invasion of a year ago. So they're feeding, you know, uh, Putin's ATM that he needs hmm. to keep the war going. They also are providing microelectronics and other materials that have led the U.S. Commerce Department to blacklist a large number of Chinese companies already. So the question in, she, in Xi's you know, court right now is, do you want to go all in with Russia and really risk an accelerated rending of the U.S. financial and economic relationship with China? Because mm -hmm. I think that's, what, that's what's in the cards if it, they do provide these. Is it not in China's interest to keep uh, Russia at war with, with us uh, and keep us, uh, not with us, with Ukraine, but keep us uh, pumping money and, and weapons in that direction? Isn't that in their interest? Well, you could say that this is depleting, you know, our, our war stocks. But I think we are now mobilizing, finally, to expand production of munitions and, and, of, and of weapon systems that are really critical for the Ukrainians. I don't think Russia can keep up with it. I mean, they are actually, you know, they're trying desperately to buy more from the Iranians. I mean, there are rumors now, and I think these are, these are true, that they're, they are now getting artillery ammunition from Iran, as well as the drones that you've seen uh, that them providing. I think missiles are probably next uh, uh -huh. in terms of what Iran could provide. They're buying ammunition from North Korea. They're trying to, they're scrambling to get whatever they can. And if China comes in with munitions is what they really need. They need, you know, they need the, the components too, right? I mean, Russia can only build about 40 cruise missiles a month. And they fire 40 cruise missiles just in one of the salvos that they've been using to attack uh, the Ukrainian people and, and, and the infrastructure. But this all started with Vladimir Putin. Do you see any scenario where he could be removed from power? Is there anything yeah. more the U.S. needs to do, should be doing, or others should be doing? You know, Gail, it's, it's, it's tough to see. I, I think the most important thing at this stage is to poke holes in Russia's information firewall. Because you saw the big speech that Putin gave yes. a day ago, and he's Some say stoking... it was out of touch of re with reality. Yeah. Right, and, and, and it's important to get you know, to get the Russian people alternative sources of information. Nation. An encouraging statistic is, at the beginning of this war, about 30% of the people who used to get their information exclusively from Russian television 
are now getting it from some other sources as mm. well, like telegram channels and, and other source of information on the internet. Mm. There are some some you know some opposition groups yeah. uh, that are that are that are using telegram channels and other means to reach more of the uh, of the of the Russian people with reality, with the truth. Yeah. General H.R. McMaster, thank you so much. We appreciate you.